Hello everyone, it's Mark Smith here. Now in this tutorial, I'm going to introduce you to one of my favorite techniques where we're going to be caging aquamarine gemstones with seed beads to make this extraordinary necklace. Again, if you've not had a go at seed beading before or brand new to the hobby, then I think as an introductory necklace, this is probably an ideal starting point. So without further ado, let's get going. Right, before I show you the ingredients list on how to make this amazing necklace, make sure you like and subscribe these tutorials. And if there's anything you want to see, whether it's seed beading or general beading, anything at all, just let us know in the comments box along the bottom here. Let us know what you want to see and we'll do our best to try and, uh, and pop a little tutorial on for you. So as I mentioned in this introduction, this is all about caging of beads and it's very, very simple, but as you can see, produces the most elegant work. Now, you could use this as earrings, you could use this as a bracelet, or you could or you could repeat this little technique over and over and over again to make the most beautiful lariat necklace. But um, So I'm going to show you how we make the motif and then how to attach your clasp to your finished pieces of work. So in front of me is the ingredient list that you're going to need. And again, it's not very much, which is, which is a, always a joy about seed beading. So you need your beading thread of choice. I've gone for a white fire line, and this is in a six pound breaking strain. And the reason I've gone for white is with the beads I've chosen, I think it perfectly coordinates with the colors. Now, if you wanted to do something daring, you could go for a bright red maybe, if you wanted to have a, a real difference in your work. But I like, to, I like to keep things really simple, and I like the, the thread of choice that I'm using to blend. So that's why I've gone with white with many of my tutorials that, uh, that you'll watch. So I've gone for a white fire line, sharp pair of scissors, then you'll need a clasp of choice, and I've gone for an amazing little sterling silver toggle. And then you need two sizes of seed bead, again, a size 11 and a size 8 and then a bead of choice. And I've gone for, again, a six millimeter in this beautiful matte aquamarine. You can use any size gemstone or feature bead that you want. The only thing is you'll just need to add more beads when you come to doing the technique. So let's get started. So to make a necklace, you will need quite a lot of thread. You will need a good 200 centimeters, so two meters of thread. So for demonstration purposes, I've, I've cut a, a shorter piece, but as I mentioned to, um, you, if you want to, to progress with the, with the length, you can always add more thread if you want to as well. But two meters, you will get a decent 18 inch necklace following this technique. So I'm using a size 12 needle. Now I've gone for a size 12 because there will be multiple passes you'll be passing through the aquamarine at least five times. So make sure you have a very fine needle and thread, hence the six pound, and also make sure that when you choose a gemstone, you have quite a large drill hole because there will be multiple passes. So the first thing we're going to do is we need to pop a stopper bead on the end of our thread to stop the beads falling off. So I'm taking one of my little 11 O's and I'm going to slide it down to the end of my thread but you need to leave a good 20 centimeters because you need a, lot, a length of thread to attach half of your clasp to. So I'm exiting through the top of the little 11 o and I'm going to take the needle round the back and back up through just once. So that acts as a stopper bead like so. Okay, now because we've only, we've only um, used one length of thread to go through the bead, as you can see, we can, it's still, you can still move it up and down, okay? But make sure that you leave a good 20 centimeters of thread to attach your clasp. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to pop on seven of our little 11 O's. Now I've gone for seven in between the motifs, but you can, you can choose as many as you like or, or use gemstones or do all sorts of things. It's all about experimenting with this technique. So I'm going to slide those down so it meets the stopper bead. And then I'm going to pick up an 8-0, one of the silver beads, and one of my aquamarines. And I'm going to slide those down so they meet the 11 O's at the bottom. Now we need to decide on the number of beads to form an arc around the aquamarine. And because this is a six millimeter, I've come up with the following combination. We're going to pick up three 11 O's, one silver 8 and three 11 O's. And what we're going to do is, it's exactly the same technique we've just implied for the little stopper bead at the end. I'm going to take the aquamarine away first of all, 
I'm exiting through the top of the bead, I'm going to take my thread back to the bottom through the base and bring the needle up. And what you will see that the beads then will sit nice and neatly around the bead. So you've got a little halo. We're going to pick up the next combination. So one, two, three, then an eight. One, two, three, elevens. And then we're going to do exactly the same as we come exiting through the top of the aquamarine. We're going to take the needle through the bottom. Don't make sure, please make sure that you don't go through that little eight o we've added. So we're going up through the aquamarine. And we're going to pull that nice and tight. Just make sure they sit nice and equal. Now what, the, what you don't want at this point are for any gaps to form between the aquamarine and the eight. If you do get a slight gappage, just take hold of your stopper bead and just pull it nice and tight so you don't have a gap. So we've done this twice. We're going to repeat it another three times. So we're going to pick up one, two, three of our 11s, then an eight, and then one, two, three, elevens. We're going to go to the base of the aquamarine and we're going to sew up. And just manipulate that aquamarine so your next row you've added sits nice and neatly in between the two. Then we're going to flip it over and we've got this, the nice open side of the aquamarine. So we're going to then pick up one, two, three of our little elevens, one of our eights, and three of our elevens, one, two, three, and then we're going to take our needle, you've guessed it, from the bottom up to the top, like so. So now we've got four. So you see my, my little section slipped there, so all I've done is I've pushed it back up with the stopper bead. So what I do, I, again, as mentioned in previous tutorials, if you want to look at our tutorials, make sure you like and subscribe to the site and leave a comment and just let us, let us know how you're finding your, the tutorials so far and if there's anything that you want to see. And I'm sure we could accommodate any tutorial that you'd like to see. What I'm going to do next is do the fifth row. So we're going to pick up one, two, three, then an eight, and then one, two, three of our elevens. And I'm going to sew up through the aquamarine. So this is why it's important that you have that large drill hole in the bead. And as I mentioned in previous tutorials, I, I like odd numbers, which is why I've gone for five. So once you've got your five in position, you can manipulate them so they sit equally around your bead. So what we're going to do next, we're going to do the section in between. So we started with an 8 at the at the back of the bead. So we're going to pick up an eight, and you should have a nice gap at the top, you can then, there we go. So you can place your 8 in the gap that those little pieces form. Then I'm going to pick up our seven 11 O's. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that makes a little section in between. Now if you wanted to, you could use your 8 O's, you could pop in another aquamarine to separate it even further. It's all about experimenting with your design. Then I'm going to pick up an 8 and our next aquamarine. I'm going to slide that down. And then what we're going to do then is we're going to repeat our five sections. So I'm going to hold the aquamarine to start. It's not important that it's in the right position at this point. We're going to pick up one, two, three, then an eight, one, two, three, and we're going to repeat exactly the same. So I'm going to take my needle, I'm going to feed that down, and then I'm going to just pull nice and tight so it sits above the 8 o we've added. Then we're going to do our next section. I mean, you could, if you wanted to, you could do six or seven. It just depends on the number of passes that you can get through your, your um, motif bead. So we have our second cage piece. You can see how quickly it evolves. So what you do then, you would con continue with the seven bead gap in between, or however, whatever design that you'd like to incorporate in between your caged beads. As long as you start and finish with the same combination, 
So we popped on seven to start, didn't we? So we're going to pick up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then what we're going to do is we're going to cut the thread that we have left to about 20 centimeters. That's it. And we're going to take the first half of our clasp. So this is a toggle clasp. This is the O, which is the ogle. And this is the T, which is the T bar. So that's how we get the name toggle. So I'm going to, I always start with the ogle first of all. So I'm going to take my thread and I'm going to pop it through the holder. Like so, and I'm going to tie, first of all, a simple single knot. Once I've tied the single knot, I'm going to slide that down so it meets the beads. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take hold of the thread, I'm going to go behind the loop, I'm going to come up once, make sure we don't get tangled up, I'm going to tie once, and tie a single knot. Then I'm going to tie a third. I tie five knots all together. Come up through, nice and tight. Then the fifth. Do that nice and tight. And then what I would do then is I would thread my needle and I would just sew back down through some of the beads, exit and cut off. And then with the first end, I'm going to slide off my stopper bead that was keeping everything from falling off right at the very beginning. And then we're going to repeat with the second, with the T-bar. I'm going to go through the loop. I'm going to tie a single knot, slide it down, and then you would repeat the knotting so that's the first knot. So we add another four knots to make this nice and secure. So go through the loop once, all nice and tight. And then you, again, you would attach your needle to your thread and sew down through, exit, and then cut off your threads. So if I just show you the back of the completed necklace, so as you can see, these are the, these are the cages that we've, that we've interspersed. These are the seven bead gaps that I've put in between the cages. And then if I show you the back, you can see how I've attached the toggle clasp exactly as I've shown you here. So that's your caged bead aquamarine necklace. I hope you enjoyed that tutorial. And um, please leave some comments in the like and subscribe bar at the bottom of the screen here. And uh, let me know what you think. And, uh, if there are any other tutorials you'd like us to, to incorporate on the channel using the Aquamarine, just leave us a comment and let us know and we'll try our hardest to, to help. So I hope you enjoyed that and look forward to seeing you very soon on the next tutorial.